my dear students and viewers in the last few lectures we were discussing algorithms and methods for solving linearly constant nonlinear optimization problems now in this lecture we are going to start the last unit the unit 9 of the course on the topic of algorithms and methods for solving nonlinearly constant nonlinear optimization problems to solve such problems in this lecture we are going to discuss penalty methods penalty methods are a certain class of optimization methods that uh, convert a given constraint optimization problem into a particular or a sequence of unconstrained optimization problems and uh, solving these sequence of unconstrained optimization problems we will be able to generate a sequence of iterates and ideally this sequence of iterates which are solution of this sequence of unconstrained problems will converge to a point that is an optimum solution of the given constant optimization problems. In the process of converting uh, a given constraint problem into unconstrained problems, we place the constraint functions in the objective function uh, via a penalty parameter that penalizes any violation of the constraints. And this is done in the following manner. That we consider a general constraint optimization problem let's suppose minimization of the objective function fx subject to inequality constraints given by gix less than equal to 0 for let's suppose m many inequalities and also let us suppose we have L many equality constraints given by Ajx is equal to 0. Let us name this problem as the problem let us suppose P and we notice that by converting the equality constraint Ajx is equal to 0 by two inequality constraints a j x less than equal to 0 and minus a j x is less than equal to 0. By this conversion, we can assume the problem P is given by a set of inequalities and that would not loss any generality of the problem, right? So, we consider the problem P given by minimization of the objective function f subject to only inequality constraints that you have g i x less than equal to 0 for i is equal to m many inequality constraints together with 2 l many more inequality constraints and let us suppose m plus 2 l is equal to some number let us suppose p then we will have here p many inequalities i is equal to 1 2 till p so the given general problem is this problem p now to solve this problem p we approximate the problem p by unconstrained problem that you consider minimization of the objective function fx plus c times a function of the constraints let's suppose px where this c c is a scalar quantity called a penalty parameter and this function px is called a penalty function Here we must not be confused with these small p with the number of constraints here or better let me revise this p by some number q. So we are going uh, to approximate the problem p by the problem p c for different values of c. Here as usual we consider here x is a generic vector in the n-dimensional Euclidean space that means x is having n many components. Here in converting the problem P 
into a set of problems PC, the role of this penalty function PX and the penalty parameter C are to penalize points that are outside the feasible set. If a point X is feasible, then no penalty is associated with X, otherwise we associate a positive penalty. That is, we take the value of the function Px is equal to 0 if and only if the point x is feasible and we consider Px is greater than 0 if x is not feasible. So, formally we define a penalty function Px as follows. That a function P from R in to the real number set is called a penalty function if it satisfies the following three conditions that the function p must be continuous the value of the function p is non negative and the value of the function p is equal to 0 if and only the point x is feasible here as the function value of the penalty function is equal to 0 inside the visible set. We then have a positive values for the penalty function outside the visible set and hence it is natural that penalty function this Px be defined in terms of the constraint functions the functions those are defining this visible set omega. That means Px is a function of these constraint functions g1, g2 till gq. So, I write here that due to the condition 3 in the definition of the penalty function P, we have P a function of the constant functions G1, G2 till GQ. So, with the help of a penalty function Px, we construct uh, this approximate problem Pc. And in penalty function methods, we aim for solving a constraint problem P via solving the unconstrained problem PC or a variant of PC for a sequence of values of the penalty parameter C. And uh, thus, uh, to emphasize the role of C uh, in this approximate problem, we have uh, here subscripted the value C here inside this inserted PC. Of course, the solution of the unconstrained problem PC may not be exactly equals to the solution to the original problem P, but we would expect that larger the value of this penalty parameter or uh, this altogether C times Px, the larger the value of this C times Px, the closer the approximate solution will be to the solution or exact solution of the original problem P. Uh, this expectation that the larger the value of C times Px, the closer the approximated solution is due to the following reasons. That you notice that a solution of Pc depends on C and the value of P, right? And also you notice that when the value of C is very large, then the points that are outside the feasible region uh, that is, uh, the, the points which violate constraints are penalized more heavily. That means the larger the value of C, the heavy is the penalization for the points excess which are outside the feasible region or which are not satisfying at least one of the constraints over here. So, when the value of the penalty parameter C is very large, the function value of this function, the objective function in the problem PC is very large if x is not feasible point and thus a huge value of C will frighten us of uh, giving huge penalty when being outside the feasible region. Accordingly, 
if we want to get a minimum value of this expression fx plus c times px we will be always inside the feasible region and searching for a point that would give minimum value of the function fx plus c times px now notice that inside the feasible region the problem pc reduces to minimization of fx so ideally the approximate problem pc for c tends to infinity is reducing to the original problem that minimization of fx subject to the point x is a feasible point therefore to solve the problem p to solve this constraint problem we formulate pc and solve pc for a sequence of penalty parameters ck that is an increasing sequence of real numbers and that diverges to positive infinity so i write neatly here this observation that inside the feasible region the problem pc reduces to the problem p by inside the feasible region i mean inside the feasible region of the problem capital p so ideally we expect that the problem pc with c tends to positive infinity this is equivalent of minimization of if x subject to x is a feasible point as for a feasible point of capital p the objective function of the approximated problem pc is your fx therefore pc with huge penalty value gets reduced to the original problem thus to solve the problem p what we can do we formulate the problem pc and solve it for a sequence of penalty parameters ck where ck is an increasing sequence and that increased to positive infinity that means it is an increasing sequence and diverges to positive infinity for the convenience of our further discussion we consider a few notations that we denote the objective function of pc by let's suppose qxc which is given by fx plus c times the penalty function p we we denote the exact solution of the problem pc with a given value of ck by the point let's suppose xk here by pck we mean the problem pc with the value of c is equal to ck we also consider that let us suppose x bar be the exact solution of the problem capital p the original problem uh, note that a point xk an exact solution of the problem pck uh, can be found by any of the unconstrained optimization algorithms that we have described so far because you notice that the problem pc is an unconstrained problem but to find the point xk uh, we need to have an exact expression of the objective function of pck right the objective function of pck is given by fx plus ck times px uh, the function fx is known because we started with a given constrained optimization problem capital p in which fx is the objective function so we know the expression for the function fx we also know the value of c given by c equals to ck a given constant ck but what could be a possible expression of px uh, 
well uh, to find a possible expression of px uh, here we have found that uh, in this note that px is a function of the constraint functions that is uh, px can be expressed uh, by a function let's suppose phi phi of the expressions g1x g2x till gqx now here what could be a possible expression of this function phi well uh, we have found that uh, in the definition of penalty function we have uh, px is equal to 0 if x is a visible point if x satisfies all the restrictions that g1x is less than equal to 0 g2x less than equal to 0 till gqx is less than equal to 0 if x satisfies all these restrictions that is if x is inside this feasible set omega then the value of px is equal to 0 but if x is not satisfying at least one of the constraints gix is less than equal to 0 then the value of px is a positive quantity because px is equal to 0 if and only if x is a feasible point so we should have that the expression of p should be such that it is equal to 0 for those points x s for which g i x are all less than equal to 0 for all i and the expression of p x should be such that it is positive if at least one of the constraint is violated so here otherwise p x value is greater than 0 so violation of at least one constraint will give us the value of px is positive and therefore it is natural that we take the expression of px as summation of the penalties for the violation of each individual constraint uh, that is we can take the expression of px as the summation of some function psi of the expression of g i x where the function psi reflects the penalty for the violation of the constraint g i x so we take this psi a continuous function that gives us the value 0 if y is less than equal to 0 and it is a positive quantity if y is greater than 0 fine so you notice here that if g i x is positive that means the ith constraint is violated by the point x then we get a positive penalty to the point x now you consider summation of uh, all these penalties corresponding to the uh, violation of each of the constraints and that would possibly give us an expression of the penalty function px now here i would ask that what could be possible expressions of the function psi uh, we can have a few examples here for a few possible expressions for psi you notice that you need to have psi is equal to 0 on the left of 0 uh, for y less than equal to 0 it is 0 and for y greater than 0 it is positive so a few expressions could be psi y is equal to let's suppose maximum of 0 and y which you notice that it is given by the graph that on the left of 0 we have the value of psi is equal to 0 and after this y is equal to 0 we have a linear expression so this is the graph of psi y for which we notice that for y less than 0 the value of psi y is 0 and for y greater than 0 the value of psi is positive but here we notice that uh, this graph is a non-smooth graph it has a non-smooth point the point y is equal to 0 in order to take a smooth graph we can just consider a square of this expression that you take maximum of 0 and y its square 
accordingly you will find that the graph of the second expression of psi is given by on the left of 0 it is 0 and after 0 it is a smooth graph unlike a non smooth point here you have this point y is equal to 0 smooth for the expression psi y given by square of this maximum of 0 and y so i write here that the first expression gives us an example of non smooth psi however the second example gives us smooth for a smooth graph we could have also taken the expression here instead of 2 we could have just taken this power to be any number greater than 1 that will give us a smooth expression for psi y so i also write here that another choice of psi can be maximum of 0 and y you take take its power for any r greater than 1 and in a combined format that if you want to take this 1 and 2 as a special expression of the expression in this example 3 we just go for taking r greater than equals to 1 here then you notice that for r equals to 1 this expression of psi gets reduced to the first expression for r is equal to 2 it gets reduced to the second expression for the value of r is equal to 1 we notice that on the right side of y is equal to 0 the graph is a line a linear function on the right of y is equal to 0 and thus uh, this uh, psi is also called a linear penalty function for r is equal to 2 we notice that this right side of y is equal to 0 the graph is the part of a parabola and hence for r is equal to 2 this psi y is called a quadratic penalty function quadratic is due to this power 2 and here it is also referred as a linear penalty function with these expressions of psi we could have some other expressions also with a given expression of psi we can take the expression of the penalty function px as the summation of i is equal to 1 to q psi of the ith constant expression g i x it is not necessary that you take uh, this psi for all g i s the same function you could have taken here some psi i where psi i are different for different values of i but in case you are choosing all these psi are equal and this psi is given by the first expression then we notice that the penalty function px is given by px is equal to summation from i is equal to 1 to q maximum of 0 and g i x here p is a function from the n dimensional Euclidean space R n to R. Uh, so, in general, uh, x is a point in R n. And here now, this expression gives us the value 0. If x is a feasible point, that means if x satisfies all the constraints g1, g2 till gq less than or equal to 0. And when x is not a feasible point, uh, let's suppose x is not feasible due to the violation of the ith constraint then you notice that this maximum of 0 and g i x is given by the value g i x because the ith constraint is violated at the point x and therefore g i x is greater than 0 and hence maximum of these two quantities is equal to g i x and therefore when x is not a feasible point and it is not a feasible point due to the violation of the ith constraint we have this penalty expression is equal to absolute value of g i x now if x is violating not only the ith constraint but also many other constraints we need to take the summation over i is equal to 1 to q when x is not a feasible point 
that is we notice that in the infeasible points the expression of px is the summation of all the absolute values of gi xs and thus this expression of the penalty function is called the absolute value penalty function Now we would like to note the expression of Px when I take psi y is equal to this general expression that you take the power r with maximum of 0 and y. For this expression of psi, we notice that if psi y is taken as the rth power of the maximum of 0 and y, if this expression is taken for all the constraints g i then the penalty function p x given by the summation over psi of g i x is given by explicitly summation of maximum over 0 and g i x whole to the power r here obviously we are choosing the value of r greater than or equals to 1. Now here in the expression of px we have psi over all g i x s right. Where inside this g i x we have a many inequality constraints plus you also have two l many equality constraints right. And that is your q. q is equal to m plus 2 l. If I now go for breaking it in terms of the inequality constraints and with equality constraints, we will have two summation that you consider here inside the summation over i equals to 1 to m. This expression and here inside this summation, you have maximum over. 0 and now in this 2L constraints you have L many Ajx less than equal to 0 you have L many minus Ajx less than equal to 0 right. So this summation will be broken into two parts one is on maximum of 0 and Ajx its power and in another summation you will have maximum of 0 and minus Ajx its power r. Now let us keep the first summation as it is. And now we consider in the second and third summations you consider to join them and in the joint terms you notice that you have for each j from 1 to l one term that is maximum of this quantity to the power r and another term is maximum of 0 and minus hjx to the power r fine and now if i just make a bit side calculation that i consider here this hjx is equal to let's suppose t and then accordingly you will have here it is your minus t right now we notice that maximum of 0 t to the power r plus maximum of 0 minus t to the power r. This quantity is equal to when t is greater than 0. Then you will have here in the first uh, term it is your t to the power r but in the second term you have it is equal to 0 and therefore uh, these two summation for t greater than 0 is equal to t to the power r and when you have t less than equal to 0 then you simply notice that it is minus t to the power r and therefore in a compact manner it is just simply modulus t to the power r right if t greater than 0 absolute value of t is equal to t and if t is less than equal to 0 absolute value of t is your minus t and hence I can just simply write here absolute value of t which is your ajx to the power the power r. And therefore if the original problem the problem p 
was just taken with the original appearance with the equality and inequality constraints. That is with the appearance of g i x is less than equal to 0 together with h j x is equal to 0. Then an expression of this penalty function p in terms of the constraint functions g i and h j is this enter expression, right? So therefore we have got to know some expressions of the penalty function p x irrespective of whether the problem is given in terms of the inequality constraints or in terms of a mixture of equality and inequality constraints. Now after knowing some expression of Px, now we go back to here where I was taking off these notations and I was in this second notation that xk be an exact solution of Pck to find an exact solution xk of Pck we needed to have an expression of Px. We have now figured out a few expressions for the function Px. Now you can just employ any of the unconstrained optimization algorithms to find the point xk corresponding to each given value of c is equal to ck. Now once uh, for different values of ck's we have figured out exact solutions xk's we then will get a sequence of these points xk's. Now you consider a special sequence ck that is increasing and it is diverging to positive infinity. Corresponding to that chosen sequence increasing and diverging to infinity, you consider to figure out the sequence xk. Now question comes due to this observation that to solve the problem p, we go for solving the unconstrained problems pc for a sequence of penalty parameters ck which is an increasing sequence of real numbers and diverges to positive infinity. The question comes whether this sequence xk is going to converge a solution to the original problem p or not. The question neatly is that we consider a sequence of real numbers ck that is increasing in nature diverges to positive infinity accordingly you generate this sequence xk the question is if x hat is a limit point of the sequence xk whether this x hat is going to solve the problem capital P or not. We have an affirmative answer here and that is the penalty convergence theorem which states that if you consider all the functions fx and all gis are continuous then any limit point of this sequence xk solves the original problem capital P. To prove this result we require a few side results. Uh, I will consider those side results uh, in terms of a lemma. I will prove uh, this uh, side result or the lemma first then I will go for proving this penalty convergence theorem. The lemma next that I would like to prove is with regard to the behavior of the objective function of pc on the sequence xk. It states the following that we have qck xk is less than equal to qck plus 1 xk plus 1. Uh, that means uh, this result says that the function q is increasing on the sequence c k x k. Then the second is that the function f, the original objective function in the sequential points x k is also increasing. The third result is that if x bar is a point uh, that is a solution to the original problem p then the value of f at x bar is greater than equals to q at c k x k which is greater than equals to f x k. That means this lemma crudely says that if you are solving the problem pck for increasing value of ck 
then you are going to generate a sequence xk on which the objective function f on this sequence xk is increasing and slowly it will increase and converging to the point the value fx bar uh, let us now go for proving all these three results they are bit straightforward for the first result we see that the expression of q at ck plus 1 xk plus 1 is equal to a xk plus 1 plus ck times p xk plus 1 this ck plus 1 is bigger than equals to ck because you have considered here the sequence ck is an increasing sequence uh, that le let me write here in the lemma I missed writing let the sequence be increasing and here all these numbers ck as they are interpreting uh, penalty parameters they are all greater than equals to zero mm -hmm. then you notice that as this p x k plus one is a non negative quantity and as we have c k plus one is greater than equals to c k so we simply have here greater than equals to c k times p x k plus one together with added up f x k plus one right now due to the definition of x k x k is the point the exact minimizer of the function q x c k right and therefore you have here greater than equals to f x k plus c k times p x k and that is your q c k x k so you are done with the first result that this is true for the second uh, we just consider uh, these two lines from these two lines the result second is followed why because you notice that these two lines is essentially giving us Now this term pxk minus pxk plus 1 uh, this is uh, certainly greater than equals to 0. Why? Uh, this is due to the following fact. Uh, you have this inequality and as xk plus 1 is the exact minimizer of the function qxck plus 1. So we have f x k plus 1 plus c k plus 1 times p x k plus 1 the minimum most of f x plus c k plus 1 times p x and therefore this is less than equal to f x k plus c k plus 1 p at x k now you add uh, these two inequalities uh, from these two inequalities being added this will imply that c k p x k plus c k plus 1 p x k plus 1 is less than equal to c k times p x k plus 1 plus c k plus 1 times p x k and this will now imply ck plus 1 minus ck times pxk greater than equals to ck plus 1 minus ck times pxk plus 1. Now as this ck is an increasing sequence we have then simply pxk plus 1 less than equal to pxk and thereby we are getting here that this term is a non-negative quantity and hence this is greater than equals to 0 which proves the second result that fxk plus 1 is greater than equals to fxk. Now to prove the result 3 we notice that we have fxk 
is less than equal to f x k plus c k times p x k, right? Because uh, c k is a positive quantity, p x k is also non-negative. Now this right hand side quantity, we notice that this right hand side quantity is giving us the minimum most value of the function q x c k because uh, your definition of x k says that x k is the point that is minimizer of this function q x c k. So we have q x k c k is less than equal to q at x bar with the penalty parameter c k and hence we have here this right hand side is less than equal to f at x bar plus c k p x bar but x bar is assumed to be a solution to the original problem capital p and therefore x bar is a feasible point and on the feasible region you have the penalty function is equal to zero so this is your simply f x bar so we have f x k less than equal to this quantity q at x k c k which is further less than equal to f x bar that is what precisely written over here so the third result is also true now with the help of these three results we shall now prove the penalty convergence theorem which states that suppose the function f and all g i's i is for i equal to 1 2 till q are continuous functions continuous in the entire n dimensional Euclidean space r n now you consider say c k a sequence of real numbers that is monotone increasing and it diverges to positive infinity and also all the terms here ck's are non-negative we assume this we assume this and also the notation that xk be the solution to the problem pck then any limit point of the sequence xk will solve the problem p. A proof of the result is as follows. Let us suppose x hat is a limit point of the sequence xk. Here I recall by limit point I mean a subsequential limit. So there exists a subsequence of xk that converges to x hat. And let us suppose such a subsequence of xk that converges to x hat is uh, say this subsequence. By this notation of subsequence I mean here uh, capital K is an infinite subset of the natural number set and accordingly you consider the subsequence elements xk for small k is belonging to capital K and let us suppose this xk this subsequence is converging to x hat now in the rest of the analysis we will just go with uh, this index set capital K as in when we will take a small k we will just mean that a small k is belonging to capital K Now we see that as the subsequence xk for small k belonging to capital K is converging to x hat and as the function f is assumed to be continuous by the sequential criterion of continuity we have that the sequence f x k converges to f x hat. Here I am taking k is belonging to capital K. 
I will not write over and again this K belonging to capital K. I have actually already mentioned here that in the rest of the analysis for any small K, we mean small K is belonging to the index set capital K for which this subsequence is converging to X hat. So due to the continuity of F, we have this line is true. Now we see that the function Q satisfies Q C K X K is less than equal to f x bar where x bar is the minimizer of the problem capital p here we are taking up all the notations that i have mentioned that x k is the minimizer of the problem p c k we also take that x bar is the notation throughout this lecture a minimizer of the original problem capital p and now in this lemma here we have proved this that q c k x k is less than equal to f x bar. So here we are taking out this inequality that q c k x k is less than equal to f x bar. So this sequence of real numbers q c k x k is bounded above uh, f x bar is an upper bound and also in that lemma we have seen that the function q is a monotone increasing function on the sequential points c k x k and therefore this sequence q c k x k is a sequence of real numbers that is monotone increasing and bounded above therefore this q c k x k this sequence is convergent and let us suppose it is converging to the number let us suppose q bar so we have now that you notice that limit k tends to infinity ck times pxk by definition it is this ck pxk is your q ck xk minus f xk and this is equal to now due to this notation q bar and here due to this equality we have f x hat fine so this sequence of real numbers c k times p x k is converging and converges to this finite and definite quantity q bar minus f x hat but we see that this c k is assumed to be increasing and increase to positive infinity as ck is diverging to positive infinity therefore we have here that limit k tends to infinity p x k is equal to zero certainly uh, because as this sequence ck times p x k is convergent so this sequence is bounded and hence you have absolute value of c k p x k less than equals to some constant uh, therefore uh, as c k tends to positive infinity you have p x k converging to zero now as uh, this function p is a continuous function this is due to the fact that uh, you have assumed the function f and g i are continuous functions uh, and now you take an expression of p for which uh, this assumption has also to be taken that p is also a continuous function then uh, due to this continuity of p we have this limit k tends to infinity p x k is equal to p x hat and therefore p x hat is equal to 0 now once p x hat is equal to 0 so x hat is a feasible point because uh, for the penalty function we all know the value of the penalty function is equal to 0 if and only if the point in the argument is a feasible point that is the definition uh, of the penalty function so here we have x hat is a feasible point to the problem capital P now we uh, go back to this lemma and in this lemma we have proved that f x k is less than equal to f x bar for every k right and therefore we notice that as f x k is less than equal to f x bar 
for all k. So we have limit k tends to infinity f x k is less than equal to f x bar. But here x k is the subsequence that converges to x hat and therefore we have here that f x hat is less than equal to f x bar. So x hat is a feasible point and the value of the objective function at x hat is less than equal to f x bar where x bar is a minimizer of the objective function f for the constant problem capital T. And therefore, as f x hat is uh, less than equal to f x bar, so certainly f x bar is the minimum most value of the objective function for the constant problem capital P. And hence, x hat is a solution to the problem capital P. And that is what precisely you wanted to prove that you have started with x hat letting it as a limit point then you are ending up that x hat is solving the problem capital P and that was your conclusion in this penalty convergence theorem. So the result is proved. That any limit point of x k is a solution to the constraint problem capital P. So then uh, this is very fascinating and uh, very fruitful that you wanted to solve the problem capital P. For this you need to formulate the problem P c. You solve this P c for different values of c k where c k is an increasing sequence of non-negative real numbers and it diverges to positive infinity. You go for solving this PCK for different values of CK. You get the sequence of points XK where XK is the solution to this unconstrained problem PCK. Once this sequence XK is figured out, now you try to filter any limit point of XK and any limit point of xk will solve the original problem p. So to solve the problem capital P, we go for solving pck for increasing values of ck and ideally when ck converges to infinity and you find uh, this sequence xk, any limit point of xk is going to give us a solution to the problem capital P. So this result assures that we can solve a constrained optimization problem with the help of a sequence of unconstrained optimization problem. This technique is called sequence of unconstrained minimization technique or popular abbreviation that is UMT technique. And as inside this PCK, we have a formulation of the penalty function. Uh, this problem PCK is also called a penalty approximation of the problem capital P. And you notice that this penalty convergence theorem uh, actually is uh, coming up crudely from the sense that you can solve the problem P by solving the unconstrained problem PC for C tends to infinity. Yeah, let us now go for uh, giving an example that we can effectively solve the problem P with the help of solving the problem PC for C tends to infinity. Uh, then with the help of this penalty convergence theorem, I will go for writing out the algorithm for uh, this uh, ACUMT technique or uh, the algorithm for this penalty method that you sequentially increase uh, CK. When CK is huge, you are going to get a solution to the problem capital P. So let me now write an example showing that we can solve the problem P by solving PC and take C tends to infinity, you will get a solution to the original problem. I just consider a simple instance that solve the problem minimization of x1 square plus x2 square subject to, let us consider a simple equality constraint x1 plus x2 is equal to 1.
let us name this problem as our original problem capital P we go for solving it by solving the problem PC and taking C tends to positive infinity and let us see whether we can solve this problem P by solving PC and then taking C tends to positive infinity indeed it is possible and this certification of possibility is as follows that corresponding to this given problem capital P the problem PC is your unconstrained optimization problem minimization of fx plus c times pf and here we take the expression of px in formulating pc that you take px uh, given by psi of the constraint here the constraint is given by your only one equality constraint is there so here h of x1 x2 we take the expression of psi as absolute value of h x1 x2 h square we are taking up the quadratic penalty function psi with this then you notice that this problem pc is your minimization of x1 square plus x2 square plus c times here in x we have two components x1 x2 we get here the expression of p x1 x2 is equal to x1 plus x2 minus 1 square of it here c indicates a penalty parameter and as usual c is a number greater than equals to 0 now to find a solution of this problem pc which is an unconstrained optimization problem we go for finding out a stationary point of this objective function and the stationary point of this objective function is given by uh, let's suppose if this expression we are denoting by q x and c then obviously a stationary point is given by gradient of q x is equal to 0 which will give us now the gradient of q with respect to x1 x2 will give us del q del x1 is equal to 0 together with del q del x2 is equal to 0 this system will now give us we look at the expression of q and you will find that del q del x1 is this expression partial derivative of q with respect to x2 is this expression now a solution to this system is your x1 is equal to c by 2c plus 1 and x2 is equal to c by 2c plus 1 now you go for finding out the hessian at this point at this stationary point you will find that the hessian matrix is your this 2 by 2 matrix which is a positive definite matrix because we have taken c a non-negative quantity and therefore a solution to the problem pc is given by the point c divided by 2c plus 1 c divided by 2c plus 1 now if we take the limit as c tends to positive infinity then you notice that this point converges to half and half now we we'll look at the original problem and you can simply find out the point half half is indeed a solution to this constraint optimization problem I am keeping it as a home task that you geometrically quickly figure out that the point half half is indeed the solution to this problem capital P. And therefore, with the help of solving out PC and then taking C tends to positive infinity, the limit of the solution 
to the problem PC will give us a solution to the original problem capital P. So this might be an attractive way to solve a constraint problem by solving the corresponding penalty problem PC and taking out C tends to infinity. Or in the other way that you can solve the problem capital P by solving a sequence of unconstrained problems TCK for increasing value of CK. Ideally when CK tends to positive infinity, the sequence of solutions XK to the sequence of problems PCK is going to generate a solution to the original problem capital P. And that is your penalty approach or penalty method to solve a constrained problem with the help of a reformulated unconstrained problem. Uh, now, after finding out that uh, this C tends to positive infinity will give us a solution to the problem P, let me now just go for writing out the penalty algorithm that in a sequential manner, how can we solve a constraint optimization problem by a sequence of unconstrained penalty optimization problem. This algorithm is as follows. that we aim to find a solution to the constraint problem. Let me consider a general constraint problem with inequality and equality constraints. We wanted to solve this constraint optimization problem with the help of the penalty function. Let's suppose the expression of Px is equal to the expression that we have figured out for a constraint problem with equality and inequality constraints. this expression with some value of r greater than equals to 1. Now in the algorithm, in the initialization step, is the following that you give a termination scalar epsilon greater than 0, that we will go for terminating the algorithm when the penalty term c times px that has value less than epsilon. We also provide an initial point to start with and provide the initial penalty parameter a positive quantity we initialize the iteration counter k is equal to 0. Then the main steps are that we check if the penalty amount at the current iterate is less than epsilon or not. If yes, then you provide the point xk as a solution to the problem capital P. But if not, that is if this penalty amount is greater than equals to epsilon, then you increase your penalty parameter by certain multiple of the earlier parameter ck where we are taking off this beta greater than 1 so that this sequence ck is going to be an increasing sequence and ck diverges to infinity as k tends to infinity. Then with this ck plus 1, we go for finding out a solution xk plus 1 to the unconstrained problem minimization of fx plus ck plus 1 px. Then we increase the counter by 1 unit and then again go for checking out the stopping condition 
check if c k plus one p x k plus one is less than epsilon or not. If not, then go for iteratively evaluating all these steps unless and until you get a point x k and c k for which c k times p x k that is your penalty term here is less than epsilon. After execution of this while loop. We are getting a point x k that will have the penalty convergence behavior that we have proved that in a penalty convergence theorem that for an increasing sequence of numbers c k if we go for solving out the problem p c k where p c k is your this problem then x k is going to give us a limit point. That solves the original problem capital P. So crudely here we give the output that x k as a solution, or better, an approximate solution to the problem capital P. And now here, before getting into the algorithm, uh, you might have asked me the following question: that here in this example we have found that. Uh, if i just go for solving out pc uh, for a generic value of c and then go for generating a solution to pc take the limit c tends to infinity you are going to get the solution to the original problem then why there is a need of considering a sequence ck an increasing sequence and iteratively you go for solving this pck get the sequence xk Find the limit point of this sequence x k, and accordingly you are going to get the solution to the constant problem. Why do we need to do all these iterative steps for these different values of c k? You go for solving this p c k and all, but instead I can just go for finding out this expression, an exact solution to the problem p c, and I will take c tends to infinity, and accordingly I will get the solution. But you notice that it is not always easy, or rather rarely possible, to find an explicit expression of the exact solution to the problem P C. Here, it it is just a classroom problem, uh, and accordingly you have found an exact expression of the solution of P C. In terms of C, and then uh, we might have thought that I just take C tends to infinity. I will get the solution to the original problem for every given practical problem, but it is not really so. Finding an exact expression of the solution to an unconstrained optimization problem is not really an easy task, right? And that's why we have executed so many of algorithms to find an approximate solution, a very close solution to an unconstrained optimization problem, right? And uh, thus. We effectively have to go with finding out a sequence x k, a sequence of solution to this p c for different values of c is equal to c k, and then you take the limit of x k. You are going to get a solution to the original problem, and these iterative steps are to be followed in this penalty algorithm to find a solution to a constant optimization problem. Now here in this discussion of penalty algorithm, we notice that uh, we have just assumed that the functions a, g, i, h, j, and uh, this penalty function they are all continuous functions. And given uh, these functions are all continuous, your this algorithm will work. By will work, I mean a convergence result follows. And hence, certainly you are going to get a limit point of the sequence x k. That gives us a solution to the original problem capital P. So this is fascinating, right? That for any given uh, unconstrained problem, uh, just a general unconstrained problem, you take off with continuous objective and constant functions. This algorithm is going to work. But inside this algorithm, we notice that uh, this step, this finding out uh, one x k to this p c k, is a very crucial step. It is not that you just go with any arbitrary expression of p x. Uh, you are going to get easily a solution x k uh, to this problem. But it is not always so that for any general expression of your p x, 
and fx you notice that this problem may be a non smooth optimization problem and identification of an optimum solution to a non smooth optimization problem is not always an easy task and this non smoothness of uh, this objective function is not always due to the non smoothness of the objective function fx it may be due to the simple appearance of this uh, px you notice that if i just uh, consider uh, the value of r is equal to 1 then you notice that this px is going to be a non smooth function right so to find a solution xk plus 1 to this unconstrained optimization problem we may go for employing any of the unconstrained optimization algorithms that we have described earlier provided this objective function is smooth uh, so here uh, this step finding a solution is a crucial step and uh, that involves quite a bit of computational cost to execute this uh, penalty algorithm but uh, here th this step is not only difficult for possible non smooth objective function but also even if it is a smooth function here when the value of ck is large in that case the hessian matrix of this objective function might be ill conditioned and hence there will be terrible difficulty to find a solution xk plus 1 to this problem even if this objective function is a twice continuous differential function uh, yes indeed for c when c is large we notice that even for this simple problem we look at this hessian matrix and for this hessian matrix we notice that what are the eigen values of this hessian matrix the eigen values you can quickly figure out the eigen values are given by 2 and 2 times 1 plus 2 c you please cross check it that these two are the eigen values of this hessian matrix now given these two are the eigen values what is the condition number of this matrix this is given by the ratio of the maximum eigen value divided by the minimum eigen value because this is a positive definite matrix so you are going to get the condition number given by 1 plus 2 c when this c is tending to infinity this condition number is going to be large and ideally tending to infinity once the condition number of the hessian matrix is huge then we know that any of the methods the efficient methods uh, for unconstrained optimization problems the newton method quasi newton methods they do not work well so although we may feel this penalty algorithm will work well for a very general setup of the objective function and the constant functions they are just to be continuous in this penalty algorithm but you notice that uh, this step uh, finding out a solution to xk plus 1 this step is very crucial and due to the difficulty of this step we need to be careful while going happily applying the penalty algorithm although the appearance of the algorithm is very simple but here is a very crucial step that this objective function can be non smooth and also uh, that when this uh, ck is very large the hessian matrix of this objective function when it is twice continuous differentiable may be ill conditioned and hence the efficient methods for unconstrained optimization problems may not work well so here a quest might come that can we find a penalty function for which we will not require to increase the sequence ck arbitrarily larger but still uh, taking ck is bounded by certain number or just by taking the value of ck a finite and definite quantity may be just sufficiently large with that precise value of ck can we be able to identify a solution to the constraint problem capital p with the help of solving out this unconstrained problem the answer for this question this quest is affirmative and there has been methods those are called as exact penalty methods 
in which we do not consider a sequence of increasing values of CK but just a precise sufficiently large value of C and accordingly we find a solution of the corresponding unconstant problem with the chosen value of C and uh, such a solution will give us an exact solution to the constant problem capital P. So I write here that there are methods those are called as exact penalty methods in which the idea are as follows that in an exact penalty method we go for choosing a penalty function Px and a constant, a finite and definite value of C, so that the optimum solution of the problem Pc is also an optimum solution to the original problem capital P and therefore if you somehow have figured out such a penalty function P and a constant C then you just have to solve the unconstant problem PC with that value of C and Px let us denote those as let's suppose C bar and P bar and accordingly here is also PC bar you just go for finding out a solution of this PC bar then in the exact penalty methods you are going to get that the solution to PC bar is also an optimum solution to capital P once this can be possible figuring out C bar and P bar so that exact solution of PC bar is also an exact solution of capital P then we can just endeavor to solve somehow the problem PC bar and accordingly you will get a solution to the problem capital P so it is not that uh, we have to iteratively find the sequence xk and you will face several difficulties over here in this step and uh, then you are going to get a solution uh, that is a limit point of this sequence xk in exact penalty methods the aim is to find an expression of p bar and a value of c bar such that a solution of PC bar is an exact solution to the problem capital P. Now here you may think that is it really possible that uh, we can really find certain finite and definite value of C bar and certain expression of P bar so that an exact expression, exact solution of PC bar will give us an exact solution to the problem capital P. The answer to this question is really affirmative and there is a fascinating result for a convex optimization problem that result states that suppose you consider the problem capital P as a convex optimization problem that means you consider the objective function of the problem capital P is convex the inequalities are given by convex functions but equality constraints are given by linear or affine equalities you consider a convex optimization problem for which an optimum solution is also a kkt point then just by taking up the expression of p bar is your absolute value penalty function that means simply you consider this expression for your penalty function p bar and you take the value of c bar at least the maximum of 
all uis and absolute value of vjs where this ui and vjs are lagrange multipliers associated with this optimum solution x bar which satisfy the kkt conditions so these ui and vjs are kkt lagrange multipliers associated to this solution x bar to the problem capital p as long as your c bar is chosen to be at least maximum of this ui and absolute value of vjs where i is belonging to the binding constraints or the active index set at the point x bar and j is for all 1 2 till l with this p bar and c bar an exact solution to the problem pc bar is also an exact solution to the original problem capital p so this is then indeed possible right that you can have a finite and definite quantity this quantity as your c bar then with that c bar and just the simple expression this absolute value penalty function will give us an exact solution to the problem capital p for a proof of this result i would like you to request to look at the book by bazara sarali sethi you please figure out the page number um, i would refer you for the entire discussion of the penalty function methods the chapter 9 of the bazara sarali sethi's book for a tutorial paper on this exact penalty method i would like you to just have a look a very nice article by z d pillo entitled exact penalty methods you please find out its other details like where it is published page numbers and all it is a book chapter of an edited book by emilio spedicato entitled algorithms for continuous optimization which is published through cluer academic publisher uh, in the book by spedicato uh, this chapter is there by professor pillo where you will find that a nice tutorial for the exact penalty method is included in this chapter from where you can enrich yourself with many other results for exact penalty methods now here getting back to this result uh, this very fascinating result that we can have some specific value of c bar then with that value of c bar for a convex optimization problem you can find an exact solution of the problem p with the help of solving this problem p c bar where p bar is given by this simple expression the absolute penalty function but you notice that this absolute penalty function uh, is a non differentiable penalty function and therefore to find the solution of pc bar you need some method for non smooth optimization problem and identification of a solution to a non smooth optimization problem is uh, not always an easy task uh, so motivated by this discussion it is then natural to raise the question whether we can design a penalty function that not only recovers an exact optimum for the original problem capital p with the help of finite penalty parameter c bar but also that penalty function enjoys the property of being differentiable so neatly the quest is whether we can design a penalty function that is differentiable as well as that finds an exact optimum for the given constraint optimization problem these results shows that we have one penalty function for which with the help of an exact value of c bar a finite and definite value of c bar you can recover or find a solution to the original problem capital p but this penalty function is non differentiable the question is now can we find a differentiable penalty function which in turn gives us 
an exact solution to the problem capital P by just solving this PC bar. The answer to this question is again affirmative and uh, this was designed by the augmented Lagrangian penalty function which is known as also multiplier penalty function which is a smooth penalty function, a differentiable penalty function and accordingly the augmented Lagrangian method has been devised. The augmented Lagrangian method is invented where we consider a smooth penalty function p bar but in the expression of p bar we will have the involvement of the Lagrange multipliers and thus known as the multiplier penalty function which involves a smooth penalty function and with that smooth penalty function we can show that we can effectively find an exact solution to the original given problem just by solving this problem P C bar with a finite and definite quantity C bar. For a detailed discussion of this augmented Lagrangian method, I would again like you to just refer this chapter, chapter 9 of Bajra Sarali Safety. This chapter is really a mathematically rigorous chapter on the discussion of the penalty methods for constraint optimization problems. Now, next, uh, we notice that so far I was discussing the penalty method where the penalty function Px is defined outside the feasible region. That means we have been associating a penalty when we are outside the feasible region. If this is my feasible region of the given constant optimization problem, we have associated huge penalty when we are away when we are out of this feasible region that if you are outside my feasible region I will give you huge penalty and hence by getting frightened from this getting penalized you obviously will be inside the feasible region and then effectively when the penalty is huge the problem PC gets reduced to the original problem capital P. So the penalty function P was defined effectively outside the feasible region. When we are inside, uh, there is no penalty, right? But when we are away or outside the feasible region, a penalty is associated and hence by getting frightened for getting a penalization, uh, we always stay inside and then go for minimizing the objective function. So that was a simple logic for formulating the penalty function as this penalty function gets a positive value outside the feasible region this penalty function that we have described so far is called as an exterior penalty function and accordingly the penalty method that i have described so far is referred as exterior penalty algorithm and uh, you know this idea of uh, incorporating a penalty function and uh, reformulating a given constraint optimization problem to an unconstrained optimization problem is uh, done uh, just by the simple observation that a constraint optimization problem minimization of fx subject to x is belonging to a constraint set say capital D can be equivalently posed as the unconstrained optimization problem minimization of fx plus the indicator function id of x where this indicator function is defined by positive infinity when x is not inside d and it is equal to 0 when x is belonging to capital D. Now an approximation of this problem, minimization of this fx plus idx is done with the help of the objective function taken as fx plus an approximation of this id. As this id is an undifferentiable function and uh, having infinite discontinuity outside the feasible region, 
uh, just uh, go with an approximation of this id and uh, this approximation of id was taken as this c times px and thereby we are getting an approximation of this problem and when you have c tends to positive infinity then you notice that this problem and this problem they are identical and therefore it is just a common intuition common perception or a common feeling that if i just go for solving this problem for huge value of c i am expected to get a solution to this problem because this constraint problem is equivalent of this problem and this problem is your this problem when c is tending to positive infinity as we cannot solve this problem because of the appearance of infinite discontinuity of this function id we have approximated this id with the help of c times px and accordingly went for solving this problem uh, here just to sense that how this id has been approximated with the help of this c times px uh, we notice that if i just go for uh, taking off uh, the expression of the penalty function px as simply by the absolute value penalty function mm, or just simply let us take your px is given by the function psi y where psi y is your maximum of 0 and y then we see that the feasible region of uh, this problem is your let's suppose d capital d is given by your gx is less than equal to 0 and hence y uh, these values are less than equal to 0 for y less than equal to 0 we have no penalty but when y is greater than 0 we have penalized you by this much amount of penalty if your y is here that, me that means uh, this much distance away from the feasible region we have given you this much of penalty when you are bit more away we have given you bit more penalty and so on fine now if i would have taken a c multiplication of this psi y that means i am slowly considering this c times px then you notice that this graph of the penalty function gets more elevated from the axis of y when c gets bigger and bigger you have more elevation with the axis of y and when c is tending to infinity we notice that this penalty is going to be huge and ultimately when c is very big we notice that the graph of the function c times psi y is going to be almost equal to the graph of the function i t that is when y less than equal to 0 you have value 0 and for y greater than 0 when c tends to infinity your graph looks like a sudden break that just exceeding y greater than equals to 0 you are getting the value of this function is equal to positive infinity and then you notice that this c psi y is then approximately is identical to id when c tends to infinity because the graph of this function you notice that is this graph right till y is equal to 0 you have value 0 and suddenly just exceeding 0 you have huge penalty positive infinity and that is precisely your graph of this function and therefore the larger the value of c the better is the approximation of this c times px of this function id which is precisely the indicator function to reformulate this constraint problem by this unconstrained optimization problem and the approximation of this id was done from the outside of the feasible region this side was your outside the feasible region right but we could have also done an approximation of this id from the inside of the feasible region and that we call as interior penalty function you notice that the graph of id can be approximated by also by the following manner that the graph of id is here are all zeros till y less than equal to zero and 
exceeding 0, you have positive infinity value. Fine. So, this is your graph of the function i t. Now, we can approximate this graph by the graphs like, let's suppose this graph inside the feasible region, I am considering this graph and I am associating this graph with some parameter, let's suppose c. When c gets bigger and bigger, I consider this approximated graph to be more closer and ideally when c tends to positive infinity, it is going to be exactly identical to i t. So, in this manner also, we can approximate the graph of i d from inside the feasible region. Such an approximation of i d inside the feasible region is called an interior penalty function or it is also called as a barrier function as if the boundary of the feasible region that is uh, here y is equal to 0 is giving us a barrier that if you are coming very close to my boundary I will give you a huge penalty and thereby the name barrier function or interior penalty function to approximate the function i d and accordingly we also have some methods those are called as interior penalty methods or the barrier methods to solve a constraint optimization problem where we approximate a constraint optimization problem with the help of a barrier function bx instead of this exterior penalty function px. For a reference of interior penalty functions or interior penalty algorithms to solve a constraint optimization problem, I would also like you to refer this chapter 9 of the Bajra Serendi this book. With this comment, let me now stop this lecture here. In the next lecture, we shall know one another approach, a sequential quadratic programming approach to solve a constraint optimization problem. Thank you. Thank you all for all of your kind attention.